So this is the, the web, this is developer.opentext.com. This is the central location to go to to find out information about all the services available through the developer cloud. We've grouped them by capability to make it easier for people to navigate to the right service that meets their needs. Each service has a corresponding API spec. These are to uh, uh, Swagger 2 and OpenAPI 3 standard. Uh, you can see that all the methods available in the services are listed with their parameters that they accept and the uh, API endpoints and the responses that a developer can expect back. We also have more detailed documentation, uh, sort of getting started, if you will, documentation, uh, really detailing all the features and functionality that the services can provide. Uh, along with that, you know, as you mentioned, we've got a growing selection of how-to videos, you know, two to three minute snippets of functionality to really jumpstart developers and also uh, uh, some code samples. So now I've introduced you to the uh, documentation and the developer website. I really want to talk to you about the developer console. Uh, so the developer experience is available on a 90 day free trial. You just need to uh, sign up with your OT Connect account credentials at the developer site and it'll give you access to this console. Uh, the main section of this console is where I've got these tiles and each one of these tiles is an app. Uh, so basically, you can think of an app as some API credentials which connect uh, the services to the externally hosted application that the developers are building. Um, and it also shows you details of the usages that have been made. Uh, so this is really useful for development. So for example, if I uh, click here, I can see all the calls that I've been making uh, with these credentials. And there's interesting bits of data uh, for developers, so like the, the full, uh, full URL calls that have been made. And also uh, there's the services that are available. So these are all the information services that can be consumed with the same API credentials. And again, some deep links uh, to those uh, Swagger docs. So it's easy, easy to find. So just coming out of this, I want to show you how to create uh, an app. So if you go to create an app and you just basically need to put in a few bits of sort of pertinent information, which will really kind of help you identify your app and relate it to the external application that you're building. And the system kind of goes away and self provisions the API credentials, which you then use to make your um, OAuth2 call and authenticate and get your bearer token. And you need to kind of download this file and save it locally. Uh, we don't keep these um, details because of security reasons, um, but then it kind of takes you into the console and you can basically, if you need to at any point, recreate those credentials by going to the, the managed token. Uh, so this is uh, the app kind of created and you, you're, you're off to the races. You can then use the, those credentials. So just uh, briefly, I want to show on the right hand side, this is where we're tracking all the usages and the entitlement in the console. And you can see how on my trial, uh, these are all the API calls that I've been making. Um, and this is the storage, my one gig of storage, I've got 35% left to use. Uh, so this is kind of very useful uh, to uh, enable developers to kind of see their, their overall usage and track. And just quickly, just before I go, I just want to show you that there's actually a, the community, the forum area, that's accessible by coming here. And uh, this is where, as you mentioned, we're really building up I like to think of it as our own information management version of Stack Overflow. You know, our engineering team are part of this community. They're really helping kind of give advice to people when they're asking questions on how to use the services and we're advertising our events and all the latest how-to videos and things here as well. Great. Claire, thank you so much.